Danny, we might as well cut to the quick. It's just a couple of weeks ago, we were sort of half joking about another contract and st- extension, but actually, you've made a decision to go the other way. Yeah, um, I've made a decision to leave Carlisle United um, and see what the future holds. Uh, more than likely, I'm going to finish playing and um, again, just see what happens uh, moving forward. Five great years here, I've absolutely loved it, but I think it's just time that. I take a step away, to be honest with you. Is it a retirement from the professional game? Is that the way you're looking at this? Yeah, more than likely. Um, unless um, Man United step in with a 300 grand a week offer, I think it'll more than likely be the retirement. Yes. Yeah, so. um, 17 years full time football. Um, some great times, some down times, but yeah, it um, more than likely is going to be my retirement. How big a decision has this been to make? Yeah, massive. Um, I've spoke to. Many people, to be honest with you, um, teammates, past and present, um, family, friends. So, yeah, it's been a tough decision. It's not been an easy one. You mentioned it there. Heather must have been a real sounding board through this thought process. <coughs> yeah, she has. She's been great. She's uh, she's asked me a hundred times if it's the right decision, um, but we both think it is. Um, obviously, I spoke to my parents. And they both think it's the right time as well. So, yeah, it's been a hard decision um, and it's not been an easy one, but um, we feel like it is the right time to step away. What's some of the reasons behind what's brought you to this? Because you love the game, Danny. It's, it's there every time you go out. So what's brought you to this final decision? Um, many different things, to be honest with you. Um, I think taking things home that I've never taken home, frustrations of injuries. I've always taken home my spitting my dummy out the pram when we've lost a game and Heather and the kids have been alright with it but the needle injuries have frustrated me this year and I've, t- I've taken things home, taken it out on the kids, taken it out on Heather. Um, that that was a big factor for me. Um, I think obviously um, I sat down with the gaffer last week and the way I play it's very on the edge so I think when you just lose that little bit of edginess then it's time that you call it a day and uh, I think obviously as I've always said and I said to the manager I want to finish and I always have said I wanted to finish too soon than too late um, I don't want to fall out with football I love it I mean, I've got my academy I want to go into coaching everything like that so um, yeah I don't want to sit there and resent the game I want to still have the drive to go and be successful in whatever I do with it um, and that was another reason I always said that I would go from starting every week to finishing quite sharpish because I don't think I could quite happily sit and warm a bench, to be honest with you. I think I would do everyone's head in, especially Dolly's. So, um, yeah, many reasons. Um, but again, I think it's one that after speaking with a lot of people, speaking with family, friends, teammates, colleagues, this is the right decision. I remember when you turned 30 and we, we spoke about being that age and having the drive you said at that point something along the lines of I'll know in my mo- own mind when it's the right time clearly it looks like you, you've reached that point yeah it was um, I think to be honest with you I always said that um, my target was 32 33 um, I've always said it and I think now um, my body everything's just decided that it's the right time I think um Niggly little injuries I've never had. I've always had contact injuries and this season I've just had a few and it's been frustrating and to be fair to Dolly and, and Paddy and Dave and all them guys, they, they've, they've been unbelievable, they have. Um, I'd say I'm not the most agile player to be honest with you and they've been able to get me on the pitch week after week for the last five seasons and um, again like I said just this season's taken its toll and it's been very frustrating. Whatever happens in the immediate future, the last five years, you've become part of the furniture. How strange will it be not to be coming back for pre-season? Very, very, very strange. Um, there's loads of things that go through your head, and that's one of them. What am I going to do in the summer? Don't have to run, don't have to get fit. So, yeah, um, I think one of Heather's things was don't get fat. So... Um, yeah, it'll be it'll be a strange summer this time, being able to just literally wind down, enjoy it with my kids and have her and see where we go. I'm sorry to hear it in your voice, it's quite an emotional thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It, um, yeah, it's been hard. It has. Um, 17 years and 
to finish and I always said I wanted to finish here. I've said it to John before that I'll not go anywhere else and play. This is where I want to finish. And I have. How much does it mean to you, Danny, to have done that? Because you haven't just finished here. You're leaving this club memories for yourself, but you're leaving us with some wonderful memories as well. Yeah, it's been it's been an up and down five years. I think obviously your first season when you come in, you want to hit the ground running, and I don't think I did, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, a relegation fight in your first season is not what you want, to be honest with you. But since then, I think it's been great, it really has. Um, memories that, like you say, memories that I've always wanted to lead out my hometown team at Anfield. Um, there's loads, there's loads, I could go on and on. Exeter away, two goals, last game of the season. Um, Newport, winner, <laughs> take that. Um, there's loads, honestly. I, you, you could talk for ages and you could miss loads, but it has, it's been great. Mm, I've loved it. And you, you can't even put into words what it means for a boy who stood in the Warwick <coughs> to have played for and captain this side. No, you can't. You can't. It's something you, you laugh and dream about, really. And that's um, my mates that I chat with a lot. They always say, you wanted to do it, so you've done it. Just enjoy it. And it is. It's been, it has been a real ride. Rewind all the way back to when you were a boy and in the centre of excellence. What did it feel like at that time to, to have been shown the door, effectively? Yeah, I think that's, and I say it now to my academy lads, that setbacks aren't, you look at them, they are negative, but you've got to try and take them as positives and it's fuel. Um, I had a real desire that I wanted to prove people wrong. Um, I got a lucky break when I got my correct move and it was the right timing, mean, everything just fell in place. Um, and again, I had someone like Gav, Skelton and Richie Procast and players there that I've looked up to for a long time that you could literally just go and speak to. Um, and they were so open and being able to help you move forward, it was it was easy to become a better player. Um, and that's how I always looked at it and said that that's what I wanted to model myself on. Um, but when we when I left, it was just a case of, right, it, it was a setback. It was obviously very upsetting as a 13-year-old to be told you're not good enough. And I think that's the difference sometimes. People just say, well, that's enough now. I'm not good enough and I didn't take it. I wanted to prove them wrong and quite happily I did. What points during that Scottish career that you had did you start to think about, I'm going back to Carla? Um, obviously I had the first five, six years at Gretna um, and it was just down the road so it was it was easy. Then I moved away um, and I just saw me and Heather just sort of got together then um, and Heather moved up to Dundee with me um, in, in the October time after I'd moved the previous January transfer window. So, um, obviously when we started having kids and things like that, <coughs> we made a decision. Um, I think it was the season before, after I'd just done my cruise ship. I'd came in with um, Greg and uh, Cav then, and it just it wasn't right for, either, for Carlisle or for me then. So we went back up the road, and the time when it did come, Heather was pregnant with Maisie, and all of us getting to that age, it was getting towards school ages and things like that. So, we just sort of said, is it, do we carry on for another couple of years up here or do we go to our home and, and set up roots? And that was when we knew that it was time to come home and spoke to Davey Irons and Cav and they were, they were really keen for me to come back. So every, again, everything just fell in place at the right time and it, it felt like it was just, it just felt like it was the right time to come home. And up in Scotland, Danny, you carved a niche at the upper levels, SPL, whether it's a relegation battle with St Johnston or cup finals or fighting for promotions and, and top of the table and stuff like that. You had a good time up there? I loved it. I, I loved it. And the lads often take the mick out of it, to be honest with you. The, uh, you know what they're like. Uh, um, but it, uh, I, I always say it was great being up there. Do you know what I mean? I, I did. I really enjoyed it. All the massive grounds, big clubs derbies, everything, it was it was really good, even, like you say, even at, I, I love my time at St Johnson, I really did, I um, love my time at Dundee United, that everything was a learning curve for me, um, I went to Dunfermline at the, the last parts of my career up there and I loved it there, even though there were two divisions below the SPL, it was with a manager that I really, really got on with and I still do, speak to him a lot, um, and yeah, it was, my time up there was unbelievable. How much did you learn about yourself through that time again, where you capped in sides and you, you scored in cup finals and things like that? To be honest with you, probably until 
I sort of came back here that I, I didn't sort of really take a lot of it on board. You just enjoyed the moment when you were there and things like that. But you look back and you think what you've, um, where you've been, what you've played at, grounds you've played at, clubs you've played against, the, the stature of the, the competitions you've played in. Um, like I said, being able to go to Anfield on a European night was unbelievable and White Hart Lane and things like that. So um, again, it was them sort of things you look back to and you probably didn't appreciate them enough when they were there. But um, again, like you say, the memories now that I'll hold forever. And you're a legend with hearts for, for a number of reasons, but not least scoring against the old rivals. Yeah, again, I get a bit of stick for that, but uh, that was a club that it was It was one where I made a lot of good friends there. Um, we went through a hard time not getting paid and things like that, and um, administration on the verge of seeing lads and workers that we got on really well with, um, losing jobs and all these sort of things. So, yeah, it was um, it was a club that probably I grew closer to when I was up there, and I still do now. I go back up whenever I can. We may have to take Oliver up to the games and all them sort of things. So, um, yeah, to be able to play in a cup final was unbelievable. To be scoring it against your biggest rivals and then. Um, things like that, they're memories that you'll never lose. Down to Carlisle, Danny and managerial changes. If you've been fit, you've played, you've also worn the armband. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it's, um, it's, that, that's tipped it off, really. Um, when you look at it, when Gaffer Keith Curl came in, obviously Fair was captain, and I'll, ne I'll never forget it. It was, it was when we were at Newport and things like that. It was just, it was just like your captain from now on. And, I was, it was just a shock, and it, the manager hadn't pulled me in or anything. It was it was Thur that told me. So um, again, Thur was brilliant with it. it. A lot of people would have been sort of a bit upset that they hadn't done it because Thur was a legend himself. And you, you look at it and you think, oh, why are you taking it away from him? He is Carlisle United, and like I say, I was more than happy to take it over. And Thur was Thur was great with us. Job you've taken seriously. You lead the dressing room on and off the pitch, and you also community work. You lead on that. You make sure that that captain's armband, you wear it with pride, but you use it properly. Yeah, it's again, it's something that I've um, I, I've taken seriously. I've I've taken roles from little little things that I've seen other captains do, and again, it's probably been easier for me to captain this club than any other club because this is a club that I've always wanted to be at. Do you know what I mean? So um, to go into the community, it's no bother because I can remember when I was young and. Pro key and players like that used to come into the community. It meant a lot. So again, it's all them sort of things that I wanted to make sure that the kids around here um, they have the same sort of buzz that I did when I was their age. Is it? Is I suppose one of the frustrating things the fact that you're not playing, having made this announcement, is that sort of a little tarnish on it? I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that is, and um, that's what I said to Dolly last week when I done it. Um, obviously, I spoke to Dolly about it and. Things like that, but it. Um, I just said to myself, I'm really frustrated and gutted that I can't. Uh, I can't get one more appearance. Or three. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that you won three off two hundred. That would have been a great milestone to make. Two hundred appearances for the club would have been unbelievable. Yeah, but I'd, I'd have taken one. I really would. Um, I said that. I, I did. Um, it would have been nice to finish with two hundred, but I'd have taken one. I really would. Um, so yeah, it's been, look, when you look at it, it's, it's been mad, you know what I mean? That night down in Exeter when we lost with the last kick, the jubilation, what, 10 days earlier when we when we won 3-2, Anfield. We've had some unbelievable days here, um, even the one against Hartlepool out here where we won 3-2. Nath Thomas doesn't let me forget that one. Um, so yeah, it's been, like I say, I've met some great mates here. Um, it would have been nice to finish 200, but I'm happy with 197. Can't you have the record books, though? You scored the 5,000th league goal for the club, so you'll always be there. Yeah, it'd be that, that, that's quite nice. Um, so uh, at least they can't erase me too quickly. Um, but no, it, all the little records and things like that, they're, they're, they're lovely to have. But um, like I say, as I've always said, it's the club's success that's the main thing. Um, as I said, it's been great this season. If we can just finish this job off and, and get the club promoted, um, obviously we know it's an, an uphill task now, but it's it's still all to play for. Um, two big games, we we do the business in them two games. 
and uh, I'm confident that we'll finish in the playoffs and then, we, it, then I'm more than confident to see where we go. Penalties, Danny, you're in fine company, sat beside Chris Balderstone as the, the joint second league penalty scorer for the club, just three behind Mike McCartney in fact, so again that's something that you've, you've always taken on, it's something that you do. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always said it was since I came um, that, I'm, that I'm confident in taking them. Um, obviously, probably haven't been a prolific the last sort of nine months, which is a bit frustrating because I think I could have got to the, them over three ones. But um, no, it, it, it's something that I've always said I'm confident doing. Um, some players don't mind it, some players enjoy it, and I'm one of them players that just, if it's there, I'll go and do it. It's, to free it from 12 yards and you should be backing yourself to score every time but sometimes when goalies look bigger than the goals than what you think they do so um, no it, uh, it, it's been great I've, uh, the penalties everything the goals some of the goals that I've been lucky enough to score the flukes and things like that so even a couple of right footers in a header so <laughs> which is just unheard of so um, no I, the, the penalties obviously the record you, you kept reminding me that was getting closer and closer but just obviously just fell a little bit short with that one as well 17 years looking back anything you wish you'd done differently along the way Danny no yeah you can't have regrets I've always said that my one thing I would say is that I was slightly negative in the early part of my career I let mistakes bother me and that's something that when I look back at something that even now when I'm sort of speaking to younger players and things like that um, mistakes happen get on with them and I did let mistakes bother me at points in games and things like that but again that comes with experience it's easy for me to sit here now with over 400 appearances to say just get on with it it's, uh, things like that but yeah uh, that's that's one thing I would say is that negativity in the early half of my career I would have said probably slow me down a little bit and you must come into 450 plus appearances you must look back and think yeah that was that was okay yeah it's like I said there, I'd have loved one appearance for Carlisle. I'd have loved one professional game. So um, you live a young boy's dream. You really do. Um, and it's been, it's been a ride. Come on, what's next? I honestly don't know. I don't know yet. I've, um, obviously, I want to go into coaching. Um, I've got my own academy. Um, that's just taking off and off from strength to strength. So I'm doing that. Um, and we'll, we'll see, we'll just see what lies around the corner. Um, but yeah, I want to get into coaching as soon as I can, really. Will we ever see Danny Granger in that technical area out there? You know, never say never, <laughs> never say never. But no, I want the. I've got a really good relationship with this manager. He's came in and I want him to be a really good success. I really do. Um, I speak to him quite a lot. We've got a good relationship off the pitch as well as on the pitch and things like that and I think the club have made a good decision in giving him a, a year's contract to go and um, prove that he's the right man for the job and I really do hope he's a success because he's been brilliant for me since coming in. Um, that he, even with this, I sat down and had a conversation with him on Sunday about it and sat at a coffee and, and he was superb about it, everything, advice, any time I want to come watch training, more than welcome, all them sort of things. So. He's been brilliant. When it comes out in the paper on Friday, on the website on Friday, and the fans are giving you a clap on Saturday, what's that going to feel like? Emotional. Um, yeah, it'll be tough. It will. But it's the right time.